Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the five most common mistakes that players make with their slice backhand so that you can avoid making them and turn your slice backhand into a higher quality of shot. I hope you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be great if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, really appreciate it if you could do that as well. Okay, so the most common mistake that most people make is preparing late. The slice, you can get away with hitting it a little bit late, but really it's just like the, all the other strokes. You need to be prepared early so you can get ready and set up in position, because if you don't, your chances of executing the shot go down dramatically. So key things in terms of preparation, you can see I'm doing a split step. Let's see, I'm using a ball machine so I can't time it to land just after they make contact but what I can do is stay nice and light on my toes nice wide stable base so whatever the, so that wherever the ball goes I can react in terms of preparation one of the big things that creates difficulties for players is not reading the ball fast enough if you can't read the ball until it's bouncing on your side of the net that's going to make it really difficult to get that nice early shoulder turn and that generally comes down to how your visual system is functioning to help you with that i've got a video i'll place a link in the description it's going to show you a really cool vision exercise that you can use to start to read where the ball is going a little bit sooner but that's mistake number one early preparation it's a really big one though the second mistake that players make really flows on from the first mistake and it's not setting up in the right position now this can mean one of a couple of things it could be in terms of your spacing so you might have a tendency to get too close to the ball or you might have a tendency to be too far away from the ball and you're reaching it also might be a case of moving forwards or back because sometimes you'll need to get into the ball so it's in a more ideal position other times you might need to move back so it's in a more ideal position but if you're not in the right space it's going to create a lot of difficulties so to help you with that i've got a few different resources but one of the big ones honestly on this is going to be the footwork so i've got a video i'll place a link in the description to show you some nice footwork flow steps that you can use to start to really work on overcoming these common mistakes the next problem mistake is going to be timing often hitting the ball a little bit late so we can get away with more on the slice but a lot of people still hit it late if you kind of look Hopefully you can see from this view how far in front of my body the ball is when I make contact. It's actually still quite far in front. And also notice that I'm actually being kind of aggressive in terms of leaning into the ball and biting down on it. But in terms of timing, other than understanding the contact point and being ready in the right position, where this can go wrong is when players are just flat footed the initiation of all swings comes from the back the outside hip so if i'm a little bit flat footed as the ball comes i've got the potential to arm it so just thinking about being lighter on the toes can really help but then we've also got a couple of things that can create problems one of them we're going back to that vision again the ability to read and predict where the ball's going if you can't do that it's hard to time the start of the swing and the rest of the swing but then we've got the coordination that comes along with that so i start the swing but then depending on the type of ball i'm dealing with i'm going to be having to modify my swing like sometimes i come around the inside more sometimes i'm around the outside more it just varies dependent on the shot but timing is going to be really important and the eye to hand coordination is a big part of that so i'll talk about that one more 
at the end of the video. I'm going to stay at the same angle for mistake number four, but I'm going to show you a couple in slow motion as well, because mistake number four is not being aggressive enough on the shot. I want you to kind of look at the amount of forwards lean that I'm getting into that ball. I want you to look at the angle of my racket face as I come down through the ball. I'm really being aggressive, trying to generate this racket head speed, trying to get backspin on the ball to dip it back down and keep it in the court. Okay, and then the final mistake is not watching the ball onto the strings, lifting the head up at the last second, maybe trying to peek where the ball's going, maybe just because it was a mistake, but you wanna be trying to watch that ball through the contact point, try and keep your head still a little while longer, You've got plenty of time to get back up for the next one. You know, you can practice exaggerating it like I'm doing. So really do everything that you can to watch the ball at that contact point because it's massively important for your consistency. Now, when it comes to ball tracking, one of the most difficult things for most players, mainly because eye movements aren't working at a high enough level to track the ball in the way that you need. I've got a video that's going to help you with that. It's going to show you different drills to improve your eye movements and ball tracking. So I'll place a link to that one down in the description as well. Okay, so they're the five kind of key mistakes slash problems that I see from players that creates issues with their slice. I know some of them aren't glamorous, it's the fundamentals, but really good quality, high level slice backhands in any other stroke in tennis is built from solid fundamentals and foundations. So make sure you're working on that first. Obviously I've given you a few resources along the way to kind of help you with things, but if you would like more help, what I do with tennis players is I help them to improve their underlying skill set with brain-based training because, you know, we were talking about those different things, but in the end, it comes down to can you control the angle of the racket face at the moment of contact? And that's all about eye-to-hand coordination and eye-to-foot coordination because, like I said, we're going to be driving through the back hip. So what I do with players is I help them get their body functioning at a level that will allow them to play tennis in the way that they want because, you know, modern ground strokes and higher-level tennis is very demanding physically and kind of in terms of your tennis athletic skills. So if you would like help with that, I've created a free masterclass that's going to teach you more about it. I'll place a link up there so you can check it out and I'll also place a link down in the description. Um, I have a program that I work with players via and if you get to the end of the masterclass it's going to explain a little bit about that and how, you know, what sort of next steps are involved if you would like to potentially work with me. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this video and got a lot out of it. I'll catch you next time.